Boot menus? Who has boot menus these days? Microsoft Windows 10 still does, and guess what? I'm gonna show you three separate ways to get them and actually show you how you can use them. All that and more, coming up now. Hello everybody, my name is Adam Gordon, an entertainer here at IT Pro TV, and I'm gonna spend some time talking to you in this episode about how you can access the Windows boot menu, that mythical place where we think we can recover our machine, and indeed we can, depending on what's wrong, but did you know we still have access to the Windows boot menus? Believe it or not, they're still there. Microsoft's done a great job of hiding them in recent versions of Windows to kind of prevent us from going in there, accidentally messing around and maybe setting the system up in a way that may or may not allow it to boot properly. But if you've been doing this a while, you remember earlier versions of Windows, Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7, we used to be able to hit F8 and during the boot up cycle, get to that recovery menu where we could go to safe mode, we could do a network boot, we can boot with minimal video drivers, the good old days, right? Believe it or not. Well, we still can do those things. You just have to know how to get to them and how to make use of them. There's three distinct ways we could take a look at how to do that right from our Windows desktop and Windows 10. I'm going to show you all three ways. We're then going to restart the system and show you what that recovery area now looks like. Join me here. Let's get started. Our first way it's going to be by going to the startup menu. We're going to go to the settings area and we're going to go to update and security. And we'll see we have a recovery area there. And we can then click on advanced startup options and we'll simply restart the machine. So let's take a look. We're going to go over here to our start menu. We're going to go right down here to settings. And when we do that, as I suggested, just move this over. We're gonna go right over here to update and security. Now you may be saying to yourself, Windows update recovery, which is where we wanna go, and backup, that kinda of makes sense, but Adam, back in the day, didn't we used to go to system and right click on the computer and get properties and go do some of this stuff right from there? Well, we could have, we could get things like system restore and access a configure system restore right from there. I'll actually be back with a different episode to show you how to do that if you're interested in seeing that. And by the way, if you're interested in learning about all sorts of different stuff having to do with Windows 10, you can check me out and all of my colleagues over at IT Pro TV. We do all sorts of Windows 10 training and even more broadly, all sorts of different training across multiple platforms. You can find out anything and everything you want to know just by looking us up and hanging out with us over there. We're going to go to update and security and we're going to go ahead and click here. And what we're going to do is come right down right over here to the recovery menu. Just zoom in so you can see that real nicely. And on the recovery area, we're gonna see that we can reset our PC, keeping our data intact, but uninstalling programs and things that may be causing a problem. We can go back to a prior version of Windows 10 if we need to. That's specific to Windows 10, by the way. And the setting area that we wanna to go to is the advanced startup area. And we do have an option right from here to change the way the system starts up, starting it from a different device. If we have an external set of elements on a hard drive, we could start from there. We could change the Windows startup settings. That's where the boot menu will come in handy or restore the system. Now, if I click restart now, that will take us immediately into that system area. We're gonna do that, but we're gonna show you the other two methods we can use before we actually kick that off. So let's call this done for number one. Now let's move on to our second way to achieve the same result, which is to see how we access the boot menu in Windows 10. Now I'm gonna go back to the start menu, but this time I'm gonna use the run line. So I'm gonna do a Windows key letter R as a shortcut to bring up the run line, or click Windows and then go to run. You can do this a variety of ways. I'm gonna just do Windows key letter R to bring up that shortcut menu. And when I do that, I'm gonna have already typed in the command I wanna use, but I'm gonna zoom in just so you could see that. It's the msconfig command. And msconfig is going to bring up for us the system configuration menu. And you'll see right here that system configuration has several tabs. Now we're gonna to go to the boot tab, second one in from the left, right past general. And on the boot tab, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna see that we are currently booting Windows 10. It is the current OS, the default OS as well. But down below under advanced options in the left-hand column here, we're gonna see that we have boot options. I can check off safe boot, and I can then choose minimal 
alternate shell, active directory repair network, they're gonna be one of those options will be available to me. They're mutually exclusive because they're radio buttons, but I could also specify no GUI boot on the right, boot log base video, which is the minimal set of video drivers, or OS boot information. So I have options that I can access from here, as well as specifying that timeout area where it says zero seconds. That will give me that ability to see that more traditional 30 second menu many of us are probably familiar with that we remember from back in the day where I can go in, I can actually have a 30 second count and I could hit F8 to get to the safe mode or boot menu options if I choose to. So we can manipulate those settings here. I could choose safe boot, for instance, safe boot, excuse me, choose minimal, and then I could simply click apply, okay. I could restart the machine, changing that timeout value from zero so I can actually toggle into this mode and I would be able to access that menu. This would be the second way that we can do this. Now, I'm not gonna bother set it here because we're gonna show you the third way. And the third way involves using the Windows command line or the command shell. And I've already taken the liberty of opening up the Windows command line and I've loaded it up as an administrator. It is important that you use administrator rights to do this. And I've typed in the command that I'm gonna use, shutdown.exe space forward slash R, space forward slash O. And these commands along with these two switches are gonna allow me to restart the machine. There'll be a small delay, about a minute, but it actually takes about 30 seconds before it restarts. And then this will also take us to the recovery area. And all three of these modes, all three of these methods wind up in the same place. They all converge in the recovery areas we restart Windows. So we're gonna go ahead and launch this one for our third way. I'm gonna click enter. You'll see the system is about to be signing us out here. We'll restart in less than a minute. We could just leave that up or click close either way. Doesn't really matter, but you could see that right back there. And then when I click close, I could actually just close that. We'll wait for the machine to restart. When it does, it's gonna look like we're actually starting up and just restarting the machine. But we're gonna see that we're gonna get a little item that's gonna show up right down below. You'll see it right below my Dell logo as the system restarts this, please wait, which is unusual, not this one. You'll see it on the black screen in just a second. And when that comes up, we're then gonna see that we're taken into a screen that looks just like this. It'll be this color blue, a little bit brighter. And what we'll see is that we'll then actually be taken into that recovery area. So watch for it. It's gonna come up here momentarily, I'm just waiting on the machine to actually power cycle and come back up. There is my Dell item. There is my please wait menu item right there. So we're seeing that. We're gonna get a little spinning, a uh, little circle here as it loads up. And then once that comes up, we'll be transported. There's our spinning circle right there. We're gonna be transported into the system recovery area and we'll see our different options. And you can see we can continue back to Windows 10 very easily. We can troubleshoot, which is where we're gonna go in a minute to get some advanced options. Or we just simply turn off our PC if we didn't actually wanna be here in the first place. Let's click troubleshoot. And then under troubleshoot, we have three additional options. Reset this PC, one of the options we saw as we went into update and security. Factory image restore, we can restore from an image, or we can go to advanced options. Advanced options is what we want because this is where the menu items, including the boot menu option, are gonna be. So advanced options, and now we have a whole bunch of stuff here. We have startup repair, we have startup settings, which is where we're gonna go in just a second for the boot menu, but also things like uninstall updates. We can update and work with our UEFI or UFI firmware settings. System restorer can be accessed from here, as can a command prompt, and more recovery options down below allows us to do a factory image restore if we choose to do that. Let's choose startup settings right here. We'll click enter, and we now have an option with startup settings, and it says, hey, you're gonna have options to do a variety of stuff. We'll have to click restart for this to happen to access that boot menu. But things like enabling low video resolution mode, enable debugging mode, that was one we used to use all the time, boot logging and safe mode, all of them are here, all the oldie and goodie options that we are familiar with. We're gonna click restart. We're gonna see the system power down and cycle again. So we're gonna watch for the Dell logo to come back up. And we're gonna see it start back up again. Doesn't take very long at all. You can see it's flashing, doing stuff. There is my logo as the system is starting. And instead of that, hey, please wait and circle as we're waiting, you see it comes up right away into startup settings. And you could see right here, 
we now have the option to either press F10 for more options, or we now have all these numbers that can be accessed, and it says use number keys or function keys F1 to F9, enable debug debugging, enable boot logging, enable low resolution or safe mode. Let's say we wanted to do safe mode. Let's just hit four for safe mode. I just hit F, F4 or four either way. The system will restart again. We'll be taken into safe mode. Now, if you're not familiar with safe mode, what safe mode allows us to do is start with a minimal set of drivers, minimal support, changes the look and feel of the system so I can get in, but eliminate a lot of the software that may be getting in the way and causing problems when I want to restart and recover the system. So I'll have to log on in order to be able to do that. So let me just go ahead and bring this up. And when we get onto the desktop, you'll see that the desktop is gonna look different and we'll be in safe mode. I can enable some sort of recovery, kick it off. It tells me here, right? Looks like we're not connecting out to the internet because it's cutting back on the capabilities of the system to give me just a minimal amount of elements that I can work with. Let's just get out of there. And what we can see, it's up in the upper right hand and lower right hand and left hand corners, but right up there, and it's really hard to see right down here, it's really hard to see, but it's a safe mode. And we can see that we're actually in safe mode right now. And we're able now to you know, effectively operate with the system can go here, and although I do have a whole bunch of what look like normal options, you can see that while everything looks and kind of feels the same, I do have a minimal set of capabilities, but I can access my menu. I can go in, I can go to update and security, for instance. I can go back to recovery if I need to do that, and I can access the advanced startup options. I can perhaps uninstall software that may be causing a problem. Whatever the case may be, I'm now able to work with safe mode or any other thing I might wanna do. And if I'm done and everything seems good and I think I'm okay, I fixed whatever the problem may be, I can go ahead, I can simply restart the machine again. So let's just restart it so it'll come back up normally and then I'll be able to access the system with no trouble. But assuming all goes well, the system restarts, there's no issues, I should be able to run my machine just like I would normally. So these are the three different ways that we can access the boot menu from within the Windows desktop environment. Even though we use the command line for one of them, we wound up in that recovery area as we restarted Windows. And by going there and accessing the boot menu and then making our appropriate choice out of our list of nine or 10 different options, we're able to then use the recovery capabilities to work with the system, to troubleshoot it, to do whatever we need to do. I'm gonna be back and continue talking with you about new and innovative ways you can use older capabilities in Windows 10 and some new capabilities to not only recover, but to troubleshoot, to performance optimize, and in general, just to use Windows 10 to the best of your ability. But until I come back and talk about some more stuff, I'm gonna wish you happy Windows 10-ing, and I'll see you soon.